When you're painting, focus can really affect how your final painting will turn out. So today I thought, why not talk a little bit about how focus can be used in different ways to achieve different results when you're creating a portrait painting. Now, for me, I have different levels of focus that I use at different times depending on what I'm trying to achieve. When I'm working on a smaller portrait, I'm a little bit more flexible on how I decide to use my focus. For this painting, for example, I wanted to just focus in on the nose. That was my main focus. I didn't want to worry about the eyes, the mouth, the surrounding portions of the face. But it's actually kind of unusual for me to approach a painting like this. Now, it's an 8x10, so I do enjoy trying new things at this scale. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to just focus on one element of the face at a time. And it worked out pretty well. As you'll see, once you get to the end of this video, it turned into a very nice painting, I think. The standard way that I like to approach my paintings, though, is to think about the overall composition. I'll think about the just location of dark and light throughout the whole surface, and then kind of whittle my way down into the smaller details like the nose, mouth, eyes, things like that. And by having my focus set up that way, it creates a lot of unique opportunities to put some expressive brush strokes in those early passages of my painting so that they show up underneath some later layers. But when I have to switch gears and maybe do a portrait commission, I totally changed my focus mindset for those kind of works because I am all about making sure that every aspect of the likeness is as close as possible. So my first focus is just drawing, getting the shapes in correctly, drawing this thing to be as accurate as possible. So I may have the most basic colors on my palette just to create sort of a grisaille style painting where it's just subtle hue shifts from the dark to the light so that color is not really distracting me. That way I can focus just on the drawing and when I get to those stages after it's completely done I can start thinking about color and adjusting the composition a little bit more because those paintings the focus is the likeness and then for me everything else is kind of secondary to that element. But let's switch gears let's say you want to start very abstract there is no rule on what you have to do first when you're painting. If you want your focus to be jumping right into the abstract, that's great. If you want it to be composition first, if you want to start with the nose first, all of these are going to create a different painting at the end of the day. And you should definitely try out every option that you have available. And with this painting, you can see that my focus on just the nose has sort of wrapped up and I'm creating some fun, expressive brush strokes throughout the surrounding portions of the face. And by doing it this way, there are some changes that have happened to my style because I didn't start with the composition first. I now have this fairly minimalist style happening with the painting. There's a lot of white around the surrounding portions of the face and I really couldn't have left that panel untouched if I didn't start from the inside out and determine how far out I wanted to go. So I started thinking about the composition last instead of first. The one last thing I'd like to mention is I have a lot of difficulty focusing. It's something I think a lot of artists have difficulty with. We have a bit of an ADHD issue. And ever since I was a kid, I think being in classroom settings, things like that, my mind would daydream to other things. And that is perfectly fine. I think as an artist, we want to allow that daydreaming to happen. I think a lot of my best ideas come from me daydreaming and it can happen at really any time of the day. So don't always try to be so strict on yourself. Don't always think focus is the answer to creating better art. I think sitting back and just letting your mind go and looking at your painting where it sits can really have some great effects too. So focus is great, but being unfocused and relaxed and just letting your brain wander is also a great opportunity to come up with new ideas. 
But let's say you really want some focus. You want to be completely isolated from distractions around you. You're going to have to do some things. You're going to have to, first off, turn the cell phone to mute. That is one of the biggest things that we all have issues with. Those cell phones are always fighting for our attention. If you are working from home, which I'm sure a lot of artists do, try to create a space where your ability to stay focused will happen. Set aside two, three hours where your family and friends know that you are in the middle of painting and you don't want to be disturbed. A lot of little tricks like this will help so that you can improve your painting skills, improve your portrait painting, whatever it is, but just to help your painting practice in general get better and better. There's always that need for focus. There's always that need to daydream. It's just finding that right balance for each individual person. Now, I am curious to hear from anybody who is watching this video up to this point to see what issues you have with focus because I have issues. We all have different issues with focus. Let me know in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this uh, portrait today and I will look forward to talking to you again next week.